Okay, so today I'm going to try to change the fuel filter on my uh, skid steer. Um, I brought some tools home from work, some of my good tools, not just not a bunch of Pittsburgh stuff that I have at home. I keep all my good tools at work. So anyway, I brought home a couple filter wrenches, my long handle snap-on ratchet, some extra sockets, um, just some miscellaneous stuff that I'll need to do the oil change and to do the, fu the fuel filter change as well as the uh, hydraulic filter change. Um, I also went and picked up some different paints. Um, I'm going to use one of these on the cab door, and I'm going to use probably this stuff here to repaint those boom arms that the guy painted. As he painted it like a real bright yellow, something like this, which I'm not going to end up using this. Um, and it really needs to be something more like this. This is like a satin, so it won't have any gloss or finish to it, which is good because that's pretty much how the paint is on the thing. It's pretty faded. Um, I probably won't get to painting it until the next nice day we get, like a warmer day, because um, I need to pressure wash it real good and, and clean it real good, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it with this and paint those boom arms and try to get the whole thing matching one color. So let's go outside and see how hard this fuel filter is to change. So it should just come right up. Well, I got the cab up. Oh, get down in here. Oh, if you guys can see. Oh my God. I believe. Okay, this is the fuel filter. Oh, sorry, try to get you in a good spot here. Right here is the fuel filter. Right down there. I could actually get to it pretty easy. Doesn't look very good where the camera's at, but see, I can get my hand right in here. So let me get a filter wrench on that. You could see how bad it is. I mean, it's just, I can't even tell what make it is or anything. Um, who knows when it was done last. So I'm going to take that off. Once I get that filter off, I'm going to fill it up with that sea foam. As I watched the video on a guy that pours that sea foam, he just filled the entire fuel filter with it and let the engine run straight off sea foam. And what that does is it like cleans like the um, injector pumps, it'll lubricate them, it'll clean the injectors, and it does a really, really good job since it's running straight off seafoam. But that's what I want to try because I think this thing may have some clogged injectors on it, but it could be one of the reasons it's smoking. So I just want to eliminate that. It definitely can't hurt anything, especially because I don't know how well the maintenance was done on this or what all was done, but it actually looks pretty clean in here. I don't see all kinds of oil leaks or hydraulic leaks, so I'm really happy about that. I checked into the seafoam and filling the fuel filter up with the seafoam. And they say to start the engine, let it run for 10 to 15 minutes, get it warmed up. Once it's warmed up, they said unscrew your fuel filter, fill it up with pure seafoam, thread it back in, and then you want to fire up your engine and let it run for two minutes on idle. Then they say once it runs for two minutes on idle, you want to shut it off and you want to let it soak in the injectors and in the pumps and basically it'll clean everything. And he said after like two to three minutes, you could fire it back up and you could run it normally for like 30 minutes. And that's supposed to burn off all that excess stuff that it just cleaned. So I'm gonna try that. So I gotta get this cab back down, let it warm up. Then I'm gonna spin that fuel filter off, fill up the new one, stick it on there, and let's see if we can get this primed afterwards. fuel filter change. Oh, that wasn't very tight. There goes the fuel. I hope to God I can get it primed again. I can't believe I couldn't see a shut off anywhere. I'll probably see it after the fact.
Man, this filter looks old. It looks real old. Oh, now you guys can see it. It's just pure rust. There ain't no reading a name on that thing. Okay. Well, the fluid in there looks pretty clean, so. All right, let me grab the new filter. I'm gonna fill it up with the sea foam and thread it back on. Got the new, uh, got the new filter filled right up to the top with sea foam. Pretty much used the whole can of sea foam. I should have bought a bigger can, I guess. Well, let me try to get this in here without dropping all kinds of shit and debris inside the filter. And without dropping the filter. Afraid to let go. I don't know if I got it on yet. Okay, I think we're good. <clears throat> okay. Wipe off the access so I know it ain't leaking when I check it. Okay, I guess let's fire it up. Let's see what it does. online where to once you get it warm change the fuel filter fill it up with sea foam and they said once you start it let it idle for about two minutes then they say to shut it off and wait 10 to 15 minutes and then to start it back up and run it normally for a half hour didn't smoke very much so that's good it's been a good four minutes i'm going to shut it off and let it sit now for 10 to 15 minutes Why I'm letting that sit, let that stuff work in. Here's the old filter. So the only thing I notice is on the Napa filter, it doesn't have a little drain valve on it, which would have been nice. But uh, yeah, I can't tell who made this filter. How old it is, I have no idea. Hard to tell. It's the thing about buying a piece of used equipment, you really don't know. That's why you're better off just doing everything so you know it's done, and then go from there. Why we're letting that sit, I'm gonna try to do the uh, hydraulic filter real quick because again I don't know when that was ever done get you in a little closer it's right there so let me try to get that done real quick because that shouldn't take me very long things on there. Oh, I got it. Yep, I got it. It's good. Just wrench it off. Man, that filter is long. There we go. I know this thing's gonna be heavy. It's long. It's about a mile and a half long. <laughs> well, I don't drop it. This will be easy. I can just fill up the new one and, and top it off because the guy already replaced all the hydraulic lines on this thing. So it's pretty much got all new fluid in it. So I'm just gonna fill the filter up, put a new filter on it, and then uh, top it off. And that should be all set. And then the last thing I gotta do is the oil change. Oh crap, how long is this freaking thing? There it goes. Oh, almost dropped it. Oh, now I 
gotta get it out of here somehow. slippery okay we fill the new filter up and I'll be right back almost there didn't spill too much now the hard part, now I gotta thread it on without spilling it. And I don't know how I'm gonna do that because my hands are very slippery. Yeah. Oh man, this is hard to do. Of course my freaking rag fell. I just can't get a grip on the damn thing. All right, I got a rag on the bottom now, so. Let's hope I can get it now. It's hitting this hydraulic line, so it's hard to get the perfect angle on it because this damn thing is so long. Every time I almost get it started, it starts to rub on the hydraulic line. So it's like I gotta push up against the hydraulic line to get it started. Oh, thank God I got it. Oh, my arm was starting to hurt. It's like a 15 pound filter. All right, we're home. Get the filter wrench on it and give it a couple more turns. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, well, let me uh, fill this thing up with some hydraulic fluid while I can still see the level site. And then we'll fire this thing up and hopefully we won't have any air in the fuel system. Okay, there's a sight window that I gotta watch. Never good when you're trying to rush when doing something like this. Sight glass is about a quarter way right now. I'll probably do it almost to the top just because I know it's going to use some up again as, uh, as it bleeds the air out. Oh, okay. That's good. Now that the hydraulic filter is changed and the fuel filter is changed, let's fire it up again. And I'm going to let it run for a good half hour and, and make sure that, uh, that it's going to stay running and that there's no air in the system.
at least I got all that done tonight. I'm just gonna let that thing idle for probably 25 minutes. I'll check the hydraulic fluid before I uh, shut it down. Just make sure it's topped off and then I'm gonna call the night. Just a quick note, guys. Supposedly, there's supposed to be an inline filter somewhere. At least that's what Napa told me. I couldn't see one anywhere. Once I find it, if I do find it, I'll install this. If I don't, I'll keep it for something else. Yeah, so this is all that's left now. Just, uh, just my Rotella oil change and my engine restore. Okay, so this is day two of part three of the series that I'm doing on my uh, skid steer. Um, I got the uh, fuel filter changed last night. Um, I put that sea foam in the fuel filter. I filled it up with that. I got the hydraulic filter changed and the hydraulic oil topped off. I ran it for a while afterwards, maybe a good 30, 35 minutes. I worked the loader and the hydraulics, make sure that all the air was worked out of everything. Um, so today I'm gonna try the oil change. Um, I'm thinking now that I can get the cab up, I might be able to get that filter spun off and just hold a rag underneath it so I'm not spilling a bunch of fluid. Um, so I'm gonna try that. And here's the drain plug. It's behind the left rear tire. See that little plug right here? I gotta clean that out, that's the drain plug. So I'm gonna attempt to do the oil change today because that's the last thing I have left maintenance wise on this. So I'm gonna try to get that done. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire it up and uh, let it warm up real good. That way that oil gets thinned out and when I drain it, hopefully 90% of it comes out. So let me fire it up. Why I'm letting that warm up. I'm gonna clean the shed out. I'll probably pull the tractor out and clean the shed up because all the stuff I've been doing with the skid steer lately, I just got stuff everywhere. So let me clean this up. I can't stand working in a mess. And uh, by the time I'm done with that, that thing should be warmed up. I'll shut it off and I'll change the oil. Now that I got some more light today, sun's out a little bit better. Okay, so the oil filter, you can see the new fuel filter I put in. The oil filter is right here where I got my hand. So I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see it. It's right under this cover here. It's right under this cover. I can get my hand to it right here. So I can get the filter wrench over here and I'm gonna try to take that off. But first I gotta make sure I have uh, the right size uh, socket for the drain plug. So let's do that now. A lot of mud in here. Out of mud hope this isn't like a huge size looks like a 21 millimeter maybe seven eighths which i should have probably all this dirt sticks around it because once the oil drains out it makes a mess hurt my back twisted wrong now I'm really in pain it's a nice little bonus for today it's like a rock I just don't want any of this going back in the, the drain pan or pretty good there so let me get a socket and see if we can drain this I brought my my long handle snap on ratchet home for this I figured I might need the leverage instead of that uh, chintzy uh, Pittsburgh ratchet from Harbor Freight but you know what them Pittsburgh stuff I really don't mind it for home if you're not doing it every day it's really not too bad but when you're doing stuff like this, you really 
you really want something a little better. Sometimes I feel I should just bring all my Pittsburgh and cheap stuff to work. My Pittsburgh and cheap stuff to work. And bring all my good snap-on stuff home. Okay, so it's a 22 millimeter. That's what I was thinking. Let me see if I can crack this loose now with my bad back. Of course, the camera's right in the way. Oh, I just heard another pop. Maybe that fixed it. Oh, oh I got it. Oh. Gotta love a swivel ratchet. Okay, let me get, before I get too far here, let me get my pan underneath it. Can't remember how many quarts of oil it says it takes, but I got two of these pans. I almost wonder if the reason it drains so slow is because this is an oil-cooled engine. So it's got basically a radiator that would normally contain coolant. It actually contains engine oil. Uh, on top of that, even the heater core contains oil on it. So maybe that's why it's taking so long to drain out. I'm going to see if I can get a jack under the rear end. It seemed to help a little bit. Let's try to get the oil filter loosened up while we're waiting. Of course, it's getting dark out already. The sun was out, and then all of a sudden, it just like these big clouds come over and took all the sun away. On top of that, the wind picked up. So, yeah, you gotta love it. Good old New York weather. The thing about this light that I don't like is you can't angle it down. So you almost got to stick it like on something above you. Like that. There we go. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to get in here? Okay, got it on there. I don't know if I'll have any room to turn it though. Thank God I got it loose. It wasn't on that tight, which is good. Because that's a son of a bitch to get at. Hopefully I don't make a big ass mess here. Try to get a rag underneath this filter. Okay, I got a rag underneath it. That should catch most of it. Thankfully I put that rag under there. Okay, let me go fill the new oil filter up and I'll be right back. New oil filter. Filled it up with the Rotella 1540. I let it kind of prime itself and soak in real good. And I kept topping it off. It's starting to sprinkle out, so... It seems like every time I work on this thing, something happens with the weather where... Whether or not the sun goes down or... It seems like it's always something that's rushing me. I hope it don't rain. At least not till I get this oil finished. Oh, okay. Filter's on. Give it a quarter turn. That should be it. Now we just gotta wait for the oil to finish draining and I can fill it up. I'm gonna plug it. Fill this thing up, let it run. Okay. All right, let's fill it up. Okay, guys, so the first thing I'm going to add just to make sure I get it in there, is this engine restorer. Okay, I got the four cylinder one, but I should have got the six because of all the oil coolers and stuff. 
Um, it takes up a lot more room than a conventional four cylinder engine. So they have four, six, and eight. So I'll probably pick some more of this stuff up. I'll probably leave the oil level a little bit low and get some more tomorrow and throw some more in it just to make sure I give it, give this stuff a chance to work. Yeah, that's not bad. Some of this stuff's like motor honey and it's real thick. And it's not good for your engine because it can clog up, uh, it can clog up like oil passages and stuff. Now mind you how cold it is out. So this oil is really cold. It's coming out of the early easy. I know Lucas makes some as well and I've used that like in my Jeep where I know the tolerances are terrible inside the engine and where I really don't care because that thing's a beater anyway. And I swear that's the only reason that, that Jeep is still running today. But that stuff, you gotta like squeeze the bottle even get it to start coming out, so. Okay, let's add the uh, Rotella to it. It holds roughly uh, 11 quarts. Okay, there's one gallon. Okay, there's two gallons. I'll probably just put in a couple quarts in this next gallon because I wanna, I believe it holds 11 gallons, so that'll be eight. I wanna put 10 in there and leave about half a quart to a quart to the top because I wanna get some more of that engine restore. All right, that was about three quarts, but let's see where it's at. Okay, it looks like we're about a quart high, so when I start this thing up, it should go down. Okay, let me fire it up. See where it's at. Okay, we're perfect right now. So, okay, guys, well, I'm gonna run this thing and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow to let you know how I made out. Thanks for watching.